how, yeah, when I guess it's similar to just a couple of weeks ago, we we're speaking about those walls and you don't see those walls coming down and you're asking God to get the wall down and you're doing what you can. Um, but today, glad you're here. Um, I'm already excited about today. Next steps, and I know God's going to, yeah, speak to me as I communicate with you guys. And I hope that um, God can say something to you today about your journey, um, where you're at, and where you're headed. And I want you to ask yourself this question um, all the way through um, as I speak today is, what is my next step? All right, ask yourself that. Can we try it together? What is my next step? All right, one more time. What is my next step? Ask your neighbor, hey, what's your next step? Okay. The whole way through, I want you to be thinking. If you're sitting at the back, I want you to be thinking. If you're on the camera, I want you to be thinking. What is my next step? All right. Um, what is God telling me? What does he want me to hear today? What is he saying? Hey, where is my next step? So when I thought about trying to communicate a bit about next steps, I, I struggled because, like, it was, yeah, it's messy. Sermon prep is messy. I can tell you guys that. Um, and I had so many different thoughts and stories and um, illustrations and things that I thought, hey, maybe this will work, maybe this won't. Um, but eventually last night I thought, hey, I need to share this story because whenever I think of steps, I always think of like climbing or mountains. Does that make sense? Um, I was actually encouraged when um, Graham said this morning, hey, we're going to sing this song about mountains, like how often in life we have these mountains in front of us. Um, and I've shared this story many years ago, so if you've been around for a while, you may have heard this story before. Um, but it was one of, whenever I think of next steps, I think of this story, and it was one of the most exciting times in my life I was in high school, and our church was doing sort of like a mission trip, and um, they said, hey, we're going to take a few guys, and we're going to go to Mount Kilimanjaro, and I thought, man, this will be an exciting trip to go on, and what we're going to do is we're going to climb um, Mount Kilimanjaro, so if you don't know where this mountain is, it's in um, Tanzania, and it's one of the most beautiful countries. Um, has anyone been there before? No one? All right. I, I honestly think this is my favorite country in the world because it's beautiful. The landscape, uh, the animals and the Serengeti, um, it's just an awesome place to be. But I thought, hey, this would be something really cool to do as um, climb this mountain. And I had no training. I wasn't like a super athlete or anything like that. But I looked at the old guys who were going with me. And I thought, man, if they can do it, surely I can. So um, we journeyed and we traveled all the way from South Africa. We drove all the way up to um, Tanzania. Took us a couple of days or weeks. And we eventually got there. And um, I was stoked about this, this climb. I read a bit about what you have to do and um, how you need to be prepared for it. And it's a five-day um, climb up, all right? So you walk for five days in the morning, early morning, late night you arrive um, up this mountain and then on yeah you summit and then the last two days you come all the way down so I was really stoked about this um, and there was a group I think it was about eight or ten of us um, who went on this trip together but one of the things um, that I didn't realize on this trip is actually how tough it was actually going to be and um, also how easy it was also going to be. And I'll share the reasons why. But this is the beginning on the first day. If you take a look at this next photo. Um, can you guys see that? This is all the people um, lining up at the gate to start walking. So when I was thinking of climbing Mount Kilimanjaro, I was thinking there's a few of us on the track. And it's just going to be us you know, walking every day. But there are thousands of people walking on that track daily. Um, so this was quite a surprise for me. And um, the other surprise was um, that I just had to actually have a small little backpack, all right, with seven days stuff in, all right? 
Now, that was impossible, but actually I didn't because we could take massive, big duffel bags, all right, with us up Mount Kilimanjaro. And um, these are our bags over here, as you can see them. But the awesome thing about this trip is, guess what? We don't carry our bags, all right? All I carried was a small little backpack, and we had all these guys um, carrying our massive big bags all the way up. Yeah, you can see them. These guys are actually machines. Um, they carry up tables, tents, um, your food for those seven days, all your baggage, everything. And all that we carry up is the small little bag, okay, walking up Mount Kilimanjaro. Um, but anyway, if we go to the next photo. Um, oh, yeah, and then every day when you arrive at your, your camp, your tent's already set up for you. Um, you'll have a small little bowl of hot water there. And then your dinner's already prepared for you, all right? It's on the table and everything. So that surprised me because I didn't think it's going to be that easy almost. You know, we get to camp, everything's set up. And the interesting thing about this journey is that you climb up um, for the first day and then you descend a bit, a bit and then you sort of have camp. Um, and the next day you climb further up and then you descend again so that you don't get altitude sickness. Um, and then eventually on the fifth day, um, or so th just in our group, I wanted to show, this is all the guys who helped us up, okay? So there were eight or ten of us. These were the chefs. These are the porters. Um, these are the guides who sort of, you know, journey with us. Um, and actually, if it wasn't for them, um, we'd never make it to the top, okay? Um, so that's it. And then the next photo is, this is the fifth day. Um, and this is the night just before we're going to summit uh, Mount Kilimanjaro. So as you can see, it is just breathtaking. And um, that night, we go to bed real early, and we wake up 11 o'clock um, in the evening to start summiting Mount Kilimanjaro. And we start walking. And at 11 o'clock at night, so you walk through the night, because that's the only time when um, sort of the ice is frozen. And um, as you're walking, you, you're seriously walking, you're following a guide, and you're walking at about this pace. All right? Because if you walk too fast, um, you're actually just you're going to lose your breath so quickly. So we walk like that, start at 11 o'clock, and we can only take a few short breaks, all right? So we can sit and maybe we can stop for about two minutes. Um, and if you stop longer than like two minutes, you just start to freeze. You get too cold, all right? So you have to keep moving all the time. This is what happens all the time. So um, this was our guide. His name was Solomon. And um, without him, obviously, we would have never made it um, up to the summit. We started at 11, and we arrive at the summit walking like this all the way, all right, at 7 o'clock in the morning, all right, with a few short breaks, all right. So eventually when we arrive, um, it was breathtaking because we had the sunrise coming up, and um, on the other side, it was full moon, so we had both um, on top of this mountain, and it was breathtaking, and we all made it to the top. Um, yeah, so it was a cool experience. But the reason I wanted to share this story with you is that um, when I think of next steps, and I think of my faith journey, it always comes back to this experience that I had in my life, because I always look back at this, and I see that, hey, you know, in order to summit, in order to get to the top, um, I didn't have to do it alone, all right? I had a guide who was following constantly. He was guiding us. He was telling us to slow down, to speed up. He was saying, hey, eat something, yeah. Um, constantly, we had this whole team who actually helped us to get up this mountain. If it wasn't for them carrying our baggage, all right, carrying our weight, we would have never arrived at the top of this mountain. And one of the things that, that I really think about in this whole experience is actually this concept of, hey, we had to keep moving to get to the top of this mountain. We had to keep taking our next step to get to the top of this mountain. And today I want to ask this question, and this is the question of, hey, are you sitting 
or are you following? Are you sinning or are you following in your faith journey? There's a story that I want to share today, and it's the story of Bartimaeus. Have any, has anyone heard of this story before? All right. Some have. Um, it's a story, and it's found in, I think, the book of Matthew. And it's a story that I think explains this extremely well between the concept of, hey, are you sitting or are you following? All right. Are you sitting or are you following? So let's pick it up. It says, then they came to Jericho, this was Jesus and his disciples, and as he was leaving Jericho with his disciples and a large crowd, a blind beggar named Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, I think that's how you pronounce it, was sitting by the road. Yeah, we have Bartimaeus, um, Jesus and his disciples are journeying, and um, yeah, we have him, he's sitting by the road. What is wrong with him? What's that? He's blind, okay? So he's, he's blind, he can't see, he's sitting alongside the road, Jesus and his disciples are coming past. He says, when he heard that it was Jesus, the Nazarene, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. In other words, as, as he hears, hey, this is Jesus, this is the guy who's, who's been doing all these crazy miracles, and being helping people, he shouts out and he cries out and he says, hey, have mercy on me. In other words, hey, Jesus, help me out. I'm sitting on the side of the road begging, actually, please help me out. It goes on. He says, many were sternly telling him to be quiet. In other words, to shut up, all right? To, hey, this is Jesus. Stop shouting. Keep quiet. But he kept crying out all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. The story is interesting, and and I thought I'd share this story this morning because it speaks about this guy who's obviously blind, all right? He's sitting on the side of the road, and even when he's yelling out and he's looking for an answer, he's searching for some help, in his journey in life, he's searching for an answer that he can actually begin to see again. People are telling him, hey, man, stop calling out Jesus' name. Oh, keep quiet. That doesn't stop him. He continues. He shouts out again. He says, son of David, have mercy on me. Help me out. Goes on. And Jesus then, he stopped and he said, call him here. So they called the blind man, saying to him, take courage. What does it say? Take courage, all right? Stand up. He is calling for you. Stand up. He is calling for you. Goes on. He says, throwing aside his cloak, he jumped up and came to Jesus. Jumps up, runs to Jesus, and as he runs to Jesus... The next verse says, and answering him, Jesus said, what do you want me to do for you? And the blind man said to him, Rabbi, I want to regain my sight. Rabbi, I want to regain my sight. In other words, he has this guy, he's sitting on the side of the road, he's journeyed through life, he's lost his sight. He knows that Jesus is the answer. He's calling out his name, even though when others are saying, hey, quiet down. All right, quiet and down. He calls it out. He doesn't stop. And then when Jesus actually responds and says, hey, come over here, he jumps up. He jumps up. He walks towards Jesus. And Jesus says, hey, what do you want? What do you want from me? And he says, hey, I want to regain my sight. Today I want to ask the question, are you sitting or are you following? Have somewhere... In your journey of faith, have, have you maybe lost sight of who Jesus is and what he can really do in your life? Have you maybe, in your journey of faith, been listening to the voices that are telling you to, hey, shut up, quiet down. Jesus isn't really going to help you to regain sight, to give you perspective. 
to help you climb those mountains. He says, Rabbi. Next up he goes, he says, and Jesus said to him, go, go. Your faith has made you well. Immediately he regained his sight and he began following him on the road. Awesome story. I love this. Because, yeah, it says that, hey, as soon as he, he connects with Jesus, he gains his sight again. And as he gains his sight, he goes back and he sits down on the side of the road. Cool story. The end. Is that what happens? Hello? No. What happens? Immediately he regained his sight and he began following him on the road as soon as as he gets clarity as soon as his vision is restored to him he takes he takes the his first step and he says hey guess what i'm going to continue to follow jesus now some of us maybe have experienced this before in our journey we've maybe experienced jesus in in some way in our lives before and maybe, just maybe, we've, we've taken our seats again. We've sat back. We've almost forgotten the sight that he gave us back then. But yeah, Bartimaeus, he begins following him on the road. You see, are you sitting or are you following? Just like when I was climbing Mount Kilimanjaro, if you were sitting, you're going to freeze. You're going to grow cold. You're going to lose hope. You're going to focus on everything that's going wrong. But if you're following, you're going to see things that you're not seeing in your life. You're going to gain perspective. You're going to see what Jesus is wanting to do in your life. Are you sitting or are you following? There's a story that... Um, I think it's on the next slide, yeah, that I was listening to um, a couple weeks ago. And have any of you watched the Everest movie? Yeah, some of you have. I haven't watched that movie, but it's based upon this, this story, and I know there's a book that's been written about it, where um, these guys were journeying, and they were climbing Mount Everest, all right? And they were about to summit Mount Everest as well. And I think there was a group of eight or ten of them. I'm not exactly sure. And it happened on May 10, 1996. They were all there. And I was listening to um, the doctor who was actually with this group. He had summited Mount Everest about six times before that. He was the guy who went with the team. So if they needed any medical treatment, he'd be there to help them out. And he shares a bit of his story. And he said on May 10, as they were about to summit, the craziest thing happened. And that is when the storm just broke out, all right, like they've never, ever experienced before um, on Mount Everest. He said that all of them were literally, they had all their clothes on. Um, they were li lying down flat in their tent so that their tent wouldn't blow away and that they wouldn't blow away. And it was just crazy. And um, one of the things that had happened was there was a team that actually went up to try and summit earlier in that morning. And when the winds started to pick up, they all got disorientated. Um, they all got lost. And they were actually radioing. And the, the doctor shares about the story where, where he was radioing one of um, the guys. And there was an experienced climber and an inexperienced climber. And um, as he radios them and he actually says to them, hey, um, just leave your partner there. Um, just leave him behind and you just come back down. You're the experienced one. Um, it's crazy weather out there. Just come back down. And as um, he's radioing this to him, um, he actually says, hey, we're both listening. All right. So anyway, a couple of guys actually die um, on that night at, or during that day as they're trying to summit. And as um, there's this other group of people who are coming down the mountain, they discover a guy and his name was... Um, is it going to come to my mind? I forgot his name. But anyway, I think it was Weathers, Weathers something. Um, as they come, as they're walking down, they see this guy lying flat.
fla- uh, face down in the snow, all right? And um, as they walk past him, they say, hey, this guy's dead, all right? And they radio it. And he was quite an experienced climber, um, had summited Everest before, and um, they're just leaving there, and they walk down um, and eventually find, I think it was one of the camps. So this doctor continues to share his story about how in this crisis time, people were just coming into his tent, and he had to do what he possibly could um, to help them. And he shares a story that as he's in his tent, um, the guy whose name I forgot, and I can't really think of it now, but Weathers, who was dead, lying face down on the, um, in the snow, a day later, he arrives in his tent right alive and the first thing he says to him is hey will you accept my medical insurance and he helps him out all right crazy story but then he starts to unpack it and he says hey um you know everyone thought he was dead they had seen him they thought you were dead and they left you there and they walked away and he said hey i was lying down there face in the snow and i just couldn't move There was absolutely nothing I could do. He said he heard the guys walk past him. He heard them saying, ah, he's dead, and he couldn't respond. There was nothing he could actually do. He slept there the whole night. He eventually had frostbite um, on his face and his um, hands as well. Um, But then for some reason, his mind just started thinking about his family His mind started saying, hey, if I could just take that first step, if I could just get up and I could just take that first step, I could maybe make it home. And he does that. He gets up with all the little energy that he had and he starts to wander back and he arrives back um, at the camp. I love that story because it shows this determination And also this, I guess, this mindset of, man, how important your first step can be. How important it it is to actually just get up. And maybe even though you don't know which direction to go in, to just take that first step in faith. I don't know where you are today. If you're sitting or if you're following Maybe, maybe so many people have spoken into your life and actually said, hey, there's no hope for you. You're lying face down in the snow. He's dead. Like, honestly, just give up. But what if? What if you were just like Bartimaeus who, who just said, hey, he hears about Jesus and he just says, hey, son of David, have mercy on me. Hey, God, like, I'm going through a lot of storms in my life. Honestly, they are getting the better of me. I'm getting knocked down. But I know if I just position myself, if I just fix my eyes on you, if I can just get up, if I can just take that first step, if I can just start following, I know you can calm that storm. I know you can bring me back home. I know you can help me through the obstacles that I'm journeying through. Today, I'm asking the question, what is your next step? What is my next step? Where are you at today? Where do you want to go? What direction are you moving in? Or are you moving? Are you sitting? Now, at Gracegate, if you've been around here for a while, you know sort of, hey, what what we, we try and do to try and help people take their next step in faith, take their next step in following Jesus. And the reason we do this is because we believe completely with all our hearts and all our souls that life is better when we're following Jesus. We have better perspective. We believe that God is for us, He's not against us. We believe that, hey, God actually wants something for us and not from us, all right? This journey of life is so much better 
when we have someone who's guiding us in a direction that will always help us out. No matter what mountains we're facing, no matter what other voices we're listening to, Jesus will, is someone who will continue to help us and guide us. But the, res- the responsibility that we have as people and as a church is that we can only respond to Jesus' invitation. We can only respond and, and we can only follow him as much as we want to. We can only take our next step if we want to. Jesus and God, he isn't going to, you know, he's not going to force us into it at all. He's a God who has recklessly done everything for us already. And now he's waiting for us. Hey, just will you respond? Will you just take that first step? So as a church, we we create a lot of different environments. And I guess we create a, a lot of opportunities where maybe this could be your next step. We have areas at Gracegate where where we believe that, hey, life is actually better when we're serving others, when we're caring for others. And there's a lot of areas in our church and um, amongst us where, where you could get involved and you could be like, hey, you know, I'm someone who actually wants to, to practice this faith. I want to be like maybe Bartimaeus and, and not just after experiencing Jesus, go back and sit down, but actually I want to follow you even more fully, Jesus. You know, when there, where there are people laying down, I want to be there to help them, to pick them up, to give them direction. So there's environments that we have here at Gracegate. One of them is sort of our Young Mums program. Um, it's an area where we love to invest in young mums. We see the need in our community, and we'll do whatever we possibly can to get involved there. What is your next step? Other environments... Maybe is starting point. You've heard us speak about starting point before, but if you're new to faith, if you don't know what this Jesus thing is all about, if you're like, why are we so wholeheartedly, passionately trying to follow Jesus? What, who is he? What does he mean to my life? Then starting point is an environment where where you can ask any question, all right? Where we can have conversations about faith and hopefully come to an understanding who Jesus is and why he is so valuable to my life and to your life. So we run this group. Another a- aspect where maybe a next step is, is actually to join a group. We believe at Gracegate that life is better together than alone. We believe we actually grow in our faith together in community. We believe that, hey, we can climb mountains better when we're actually carrying each other's baggage, when we're actually journeying together when we're actually spending time together. And we have so many different um, life groups around Grayscape. But maybe your next step is to join one, or maybe your next step is actually to say, hey, you know what? Maybe it's time that, that I take a next step in creating a group, just a group where, where people can come out of loneliness, people can come out of, you know, whatever, wherever they're sitting on the side of the road. What is your next step? Another thing we believe at Gracegate is that we believe that getting baptized is the next step, all right? Um, going public about your faith um, is, is a declaration, and it, there's no sort of like a, a radical change that happens when you do this, but what it is is you just declaring and saying to everyone, hey, I'm dying to my old life, I'm putting away my blindness, and I'm saying, hey, Jesus, I want to follow you wholeheartedly, and I just want to go public about this and say that you're my Savior. So we do this, we, we fill this tank up, and we dunk people, and we believe there's actually, you know, there, there's significance in it because it's a next step that we take in our faith journey where we can actually proclaim and we can say, hey, Jesus, I'm following you step by step. I'm done with sitting down. Another next step that we believe in is to actually, you know, God is actually challenging us to live lives that are open-handed, all right? Not to live lives that are, that are like this, but actually live lives that are open-handed. 
And if it wasn't for all the volunteers and all the, the people who invest in this community, yeah, there would be nothing, yeah. We wouldn't be able to create these environments. We wouldn't be able to do anything, yeah, without people who are faithfully giving and donating to the cause, yeah. Honestly, it blows my mind the irrational generosity that people invest in this community and in people's lives. And this is a next step. This is us saying, hey, God, I actually believe that it is better to give than to receive. It is better to actually go fully for you. So maybe this is your next step. Maybe a next step is, is actually volunteering. There's so many environments here at Grayscale where we struggle like continuously. I mean, we call people up weekly um, just saying, hey, can you help us out? No, I'm sorry, I'm busy. Or, hey, can you help us out? Oh, again. And I am so thankful for everyone who gets behind this cause because we're a small community of people here that is making a significant big difference. And if it wasn't for everyone who just puts their hand up, who says, hey, yeah, use me. This is my next step. Nothing would happen here. So maybe this, is, maybe this is your next step. Maybe God is saying, hey, you know what? Maybe it's my time to not only just, just be a volunteer, but to be an owner, to take ownership of my faith and to actually see where God wants to position me to make a difference. Where is it? What is my gift? What is in my hand? What is... God wanting me to use to make a difference in someone's life who might be sitting on the side of the road blind. The other thing that we, we've done a couple of years now is our service trips. And if you were here last week, um, you would have heard all the stories about people who are just, you know, continuously, passionately getting involved. And without everyone's contribution in that, um, yeah. We wouldn't be making a difference. I saw last night um, some photos of the classrooms that we spoke about last week, and all the kids um, were inside their classrooms, so we can post it on Facebook. But super cool to see. They were just ecstatic, hands up, and just so ecstatic about these new classrooms. What is your next step? What is, what is God asking you? What is he saying, hey, um, where is your next step? And maybe it's got nothing to do with anything that I've just spoken about yet. Maybe it's outside of Gracegate. Maybe it's actually another opportunity could actually be, you know, just getting in the Word. A way to actually just see, hey, what, what is God all about? How can I learn from it? And at Gracegate, we, have, we give everyone this free resource, okay? And I always say this resource, it's like Netflix on steroids, all right? It is super good. It is great. It's called Right Now Media. And it's got, I don't know how many thousands of different resources on every single topic that you can think of, right? From parenting to marriage to um, just understanding the depths of the Bible. There's kids, like if you're a parent and you haven't subscribed to Right Now Media, you are missing out because there are thousands of good kids programs, all right, that you can watch. So right now, media, maybe your next step is actually, you know what? Maybe I just need to, to watch a, a talk once a week. Maybe that's my next step. If you want to find out more about right now, media, um, it's always in our newsletter, I think, and there's cards that will be at the back that you can just sign up and we'll, we'll add you to that. And another thing is maybe it's just actually just getting in the Word. Um, we believe that actually God's biggest revelation to us is through the Bible, all right? We believe that actually when, when you read the Bible, there's something supernatural in there that can position you to continue to follow, to give you greater perspective about life, to give you hope, to give you a peace when there's storms that you're facing in life. And today, if you've got a smartphone, do you have version, the Bible app, all right? Yeah? If you have a smartphone and you don't have Uversion, right? I want to only show a bit what Uversion is all about today. And Uversion is just an app you can get it on um, Android and you can get it on the um, app, uh, Apple Store or iTunes Store. And one of the things that Uversion has is it just has 
thousands, literally thousands of daily devotionals, different topics um, from, you know, men's, men's stuff to women's stuff to parenting to marriage. It's like similar to Right Now Media, but this is just on your phone. And you can, you can join up um, every day if you want to. You can get a, a Bible verse sent to your phone. Um, and all that this is doing is maybe this is just your next step in growing in your faith. Maybe it's just like, hey, you know, this can be helpful in, in giving me perspective in life. Um, one of the things that you can also do is you can follow these um, devotional plans. And some of them are like seven days, some are 40 days. And you set reminders. It will give you a reminder. Do whatever you can possibly do to position yourself to continue to follow and to grow. So these are just a few Maybe things that maybe is your next step. But maybe your next step is, is absolutely none of the stuff that I've even spoken about today. But whatever it is, if it's inside Grace Gate, if it's outside Grace Gate, if it's in the Word, if it's in worship, whatever it is, if it's serving someone, if it's a friend who's in need, whatever that next step is, I want to encourage and I want to challenge you to take that next step to stand up, to move towards Jesus. I want to end off with this passage found in Hebrews. And um, in Hebrews chapter 11, the, the person who writes Hebrews sort of shares about these, these warriors of faith, right? And how, you know, all of them were, were not perfect in their faith. Like they continuously climbed the mountain, probably got lost, went the wrong way fell down. I loved Rosalind just sharing today about, you know, this journey is often up and down. It's difficult. Um, and he shares about all these people who've journeyed through faith, but these are the gladiators, all right, of following Jesus. These are the gladiators of following God. And all of them had, had their imperfections, all right? They weren't the greatest. They, they were blind at times, but they continued to follow. And in Hebrews chapter 12, it starts off like this, and it says, Therefore, all right, because of this chapter, because of this faith chapter, it says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. In other words, hey, wh whatever you may be, be hanging on to, what it, whatever weight, whatever baggage is on top of you that is sort of, you know, pushing you down so that you're seated the whole time or whatever voices are, are trying to shut you up. He's saying, hey, throw it aside. Get rid of it. He says, let us throw off everything. And then he says, let us run with perseverance, all right? The race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus. Fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. The guy who started it. The guy who's going to finish it. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus. What I'm understanding and what I'm discovering is that wherever you fix your eyes is the direction your, your actually feet are going to go towards. All right? If you're fixing your eyes on, on something this side, your feet are going to walk towards that. Fix your eyes on Jesus the author and the finisher of our faith. There's this quote that I want to end with today. And it says, sometimes the smallest step in the right direction ends up being the biggest step of your life. Tiptoe if you must, but take a step. Whatever that step is today, take that step. If you're tiptoeing, if you're not sure, just take that first step. You don't need to know everything that's going to happen in the journey. We don't. But hey, if Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith, why wouldn't you want to take that step? Today we're going to dish, up, um, dish out some cards. And these cards are basically all it says on is my next step is. All right? And I'm going to invite them. Well, actually, I'm not going to invite the guys to come up yet, but I want everyone to take this piece of paper. My next step is, 
And I want you to jot down for yourself what is God saying to you this morning? Where is my next step? Write it down. And then I want you to take this piece of paper. I want you to just take it home. Um, put it maybe somewhere where you're going to see it, being in the mirror or next to your bedside table on your desk, probably on your smartphone. It's a good idea. But jot down, what is your next step? What is God saying to you today? Hey, where's, where's my next step? Anyone else need a piece of paper? And then there's another card that I think some of you might get. And um, it says, count me in. And if maybe your next step is maybe in a place of, hey, um, at Gracegate, we currently have needs. We're, we're always looking for, for greeters or ushers to just welcome people and just to give a big smile and say, hey, we are glad that you are here. Um, we need more baristas who are able to make good coffee Saturday mornings. If that's you, maybe then take it. We need um, people who will be able to help us driving the young mums, all right? We've got a huge intake of young mums that just started this past week. And the more volunteers we have who can help out, um, the easier it will be. we got youth groups every Friday night. They always have a meal together. If you love prepping food, maybe that's one of your things. Maybe it's, um, you know, Saturday lunch. We, we believe that we want to share a meal together every Saturday. Um, but we need, like, everyone to contribute. So if that is your thing, maybe that's it. Hey, my next step is I want to bring something. Um, maybe it's, you know, joining the guys at the back there. Without them, none of this would happen, all right? Thank you, guys. Um, but yeah, without them, a lot of the stuff wouldn't be able, be possible, and we need more volunteers. Um, Grace Babies, during the programs, we always have teachers in, the, in our kids' environments, and maybe if that's you, we'd love your help, um, Maybe it's on a Wednesday night. Wednesday night, we've got so many young adults um, coming to the Spark events, and they're bringing their kids, all right? And we'd love if maybe you, you are keen to um, babysit some kids during that time. Um, we'd love to have you. Maybe it's on the team, the music team. Maybe it's helping out at the holiday, uh, Salt Holiday Program. Maybe it's actually leading a life group. Um, maybe it's something else, whatever it is. Um, I'd encourage you just to write it down. And if, if anything you tick on this, it would be cool if you left it with us. So you can just maybe put it in the young mom's room. Oh, there's going to be a, a yellow bucket there. Um, but otherwise, if you think of anything else, maybe God's telling you, hey, my next step is actually to do something completely different that hasn't even been started in this community. Um, let's hear about it because we want to do wherever God is leading us. So jot that down, and um, if you have that, I want you to just hold it in your hand, and we're going to pray for it today. God, I thank you for, um, yeah, that you are the author and the finisher of our faith. I thank you that you give us perspective, you give us sight in life when it can get overwhelming, and um, we know you're a God who loves us and cares for us, and actually always want something better for our lives. And we know we can continue to see that as we journey with you, as we, as we follow you, as we take a next step. And today we've written our next step on this piece of paper. And I just want to pray, God, that whatever that next step is, that you will help us, that you will give us the courage to stand up, to sort of drop our cloak, to shout out, and to just take that next step, God. Um, and I pray through that, that you will, you will build our faith. You will teach us, you will guide us, and you will show us more of who you are. I thank you for this community. I thank you for so many people who continuously stand up and, 
and, and make a difference here at Gracegate. I thank you that they make a difference in people's lives, and I thank you that they do it because they have a connection with you, God. So I pray that you will continue to journey with us. Help us never to sit. Help us to keep walking, even if it is at a snail pace, to just keep following. Because we know as we do that, we can experience you in ways that we can't ever experience just by sitting, God. So we pray for this today. We pray for this next step. In Jesus' name, amen.